Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Facebook and their first quarter earnings results. Uh, so over the past couple of days, their results were released and I just listened to their conference call. So I'm excited today to share with you my thoughts on their earnings and break down some of the most important numbers if you're looking at Facebook as an investment. We're also going to talk about a huge investment that Facebook just made, a $6 billion investment they just made into an Indian telecommunications company. And then I will share my thoughts on how the latest quarter of earnings changes or does not change my opinion about Facebook as an investment. Uh, so that is all that you can look forward to in today's video. And uh, something that you don't see when I'm editing these videos is the six times that I just tried to record that intro. There was a fly that came on the screen uh, into a for sake. My phone rang. It's not fun, but I finally got it done. So with that said, uh, let's get straight into this video. So the first thing that I always like to do when I'm looking at the earnings that come out for a company is to go through the press release and sort of dive into and analyze some of the most important highlights that came out for the business. And for those who followed the channel for a while and follow the Warren Buffett style of investing, if you're invested in a company or you're, it's on your watch list, what you're looking for in these quarterly earnings is the performance of key business indicators. And key business indicators are some numbers that are unique to a business or an industry that tell us about the performance of the business, whether it's driving it forward, whether the business is driving forward in that industry or whether they're lagging behind their competitors. And that is what we're gonna go through and look at in the press release. So jumping over to the press release, the first thing that we can see is some of the major numbers that came out for Facebook. So we have revenue, you can see that uh, was still dominated by advertising, of course and overall came in at $17.7 .7 billion, which was up 18% year over year. So very impressive growth, continued high double digits, which is what I've been expecting uh, out of Facebook. And I expect to continue to see that uh, more or less on average over the next half decade and the next decade. In terms of net income, net income came in at just under $5 billion, which was up 102% year over year. Uh, although that is a little bit misleading because the 2019 number uh, includes a $3 billion legal expense. So if you exclude that one-time expense from the 2019 net income number, then 2019 net income looks closer to $5.5 billion, which means that this quarter is actually a, a decrease uh, in profitability in this quarter. And this decrease in profitability while they continue to grow revenue at high, uh, in the high teens, uh, is really attributable to the fact that Mark Zuckerberg and the management team have really been pushing hard in order to ensure that there is strong safety and security and privacy among the data used on their platform. And they're making huge investments in the future of the business, which is going to hurt profits in the short term, but it will, or it should make sure that the platform is sustainable sustainable over the long term and that people continue to use Facebook's platform, whether it's Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, or Facebook platform itself. Uh, so I don't mind if their profitability is down in the short term and I trust the management team uh, knows what they're doing in order to maintain that customer base, maintain the advertisers and the people who use the social media platforms so that over the long term they can return to growth on their bottom line. Some of the key business indicators for Facebook are around the number of active users on the platform. So uh, daily active users, we can skim through these daily, monthly active users, and then also we can look at uh, daily active users for at least one of their services that comes under the family of daily active users title and then family monthly active users, you can see that the growth uh, year over year was somewhere around 10, 11%, 12%, uh, and then 11% again. So you're seeing around 10 to 12% growth in the number of users year over year, which is still very, very impressive growth in the number of people who are using the platform on a daily or a monthly basis. In terms of the balance sheet, so in terms of the financial health of the business, uh, Facebook here has said that their cash and cash equivalents, as well as marketable securities, which are short-term investments in most cases, uh, came in at approximately $60 billion, and they also have no debt. So their financial position has been one of their strongest selling points to investors for a very long time, and that continues to be the case. $60 billion in cash after a big acquisition as well, and no debt. There is no chance this company goes bankrupt. 
it, so we don't have to worry about it, the company going bankrupt in the short term and ruining our long-term investment. We can step aside from looking at that. We don't need to worry about that. Then we can just focus our analysis on making sure that the business is run by great people and that it has distinct competitive advantages that will allow it to continue to generate more revenue and profit over time. Jumping over to the cash flow statement, one thing that I like to look for in great businesses, especially when stock prices are falling in the short term for an unrelated reason, uh, I like to look to the cash flow statement to see if the company bumped up their share repurchases because something you'll notice with a great management team is that they will do heavy share repurchases when the stock price of their businesses falls uh, for no long-term reason. And this is a perfect situation where because the business isn't going to go bankrupt, the falling stock price that we've seen from Facebook throughout March opened up an opportunity for the management team to buy back stock at a cheaper price and increase the share ownership for existing shareholders. Um, so if we head over to the cash flow statement, we can see that in this quarter, uh, they did about $1.25 billion worth of share repurchases, which was about double compared to the same period last year. Now, in terms of my thoughts on this quarter, there's really nothing to say about Facebook in this quarter, except that they continue to show impressive double digit growth, even though March would have been uh, a little bit weaker for them considering the slowdown. And, and Mark Zuckerberg spoke about how in the April period that they're looking at, which is the first month of the second quarter, uh, they are seeing a slowdown and a decrease in advertising revenue. So um, we will probably see most of the effects of that in the second quarter. Um, but we're still seeing a business that clearly has distinct competitive advantages and is able to continue to grow at a high rate. So there's really nothing to say about what happened in this quarter. And that is generally the case with businesses that are really strong fundamental businesses. The, when a quarter comes around, it's usually just, you have a look, are they more or less on track? Yes. Are there some short-term problems going on? Yes. Are short-term problems affecting all businesses? Yes. So nothing really has changed about my opinion on where this company will go over the long term. However, there was some other big news that came out of Facebook this week, and I think this is probably more important than their quarterly earnings, and that was their investment in Geo or Jio, I'm not sure, Jio Platforms, uh, which is an Indian telecommunications company. It's actually the biggest uh, telecommunications company in India. So Facebook made a $5.6 billion investment, which represented a 10% stake in this company. And they've essentially aligned themselves with a company in India that is responsible for taking the most people from being offline to online in India. So taking people from not using the internet to using the internet to communicate, to make payments and to sort of uh, communicate with businesses, communicate in e-commerce. And there is a great article on Facebook's website that explains and rationalizes this investment and why they spent $5.6 billion to align themselves uh, with this company, with Jio Platforms. And a part of it, part of the reason is that this company is, it's the biggest telecommunications company in India, but not only that, they are responsible for bringing almost 400 million people onto the internet. So that's 400 million people who were not on the internet to now being on the internet and communicating with each other, making payments with each other and engaging in e-commerce. And all of those activities, communications, payments and e-commerce are all areas that Facebook wants to get into heavily in India. So it makes perfect sense for them to align themselves with a company that has the most customers, has the most, uh, I guess, the, bi the biggest reputation for providing these services for people in India so that Facebook can align themselves and benefit from that relationship. On the conference call, Mark Zuckerberg specifically referenced to a plan that they have with Jio, which is to take Jio's customers, their clients, the 400 million people that they've brought online and combine those customers with WhatsApp in order to do payments through WhatsApp. So this is going to be one of their first big moves in the payments industry, uh, facilitating the transaction between uh, individuals to individuals as well as individuals to businesses uh, and Facebook of course doing that through the WhatsApp uh, uh, WhatsApp app would be able to generate revenue from that stream and um, I guess one other stat that I that I found or that was in this Facebook article that kind of blew me away 
was uh, alluding to the huge opportunity that is available in India for uh, payments and for, I, I guess, advertising as well if they can develop a big audience in India on Facebook. Um, and that is that over the last five years alone, India has brought 560 million people online. So there was 560 million people in India who didn't use the internet five years ago, and now they do. And that's only going to continue to grow as India continues to develop and continues to come online. And Facebook is going to do everything in their power in order to make sure that they are a big player in advertising and payments in that industry. And uh, I have no doubt that they'll be able to make a significant dent into that market, take significant market share. And why do I think that? Well, because firstly, they have had huge success over the past decade and a half doing it in Western countries. The second reason is that they have $60 billion in cash and no debt. So even if they can't be the company that comes up with the innovation or, or is the, the first company that uh, the Indian population goes to when they go online... Facebook can do things like making this investment and making many other investments in order to align themselves with the businesses that are dominating in those industries, or even just to buy them outright like they did with Instagram. Facebook didn't come up with Instagram. Instagram was its own beast that was growing faster than the Facebook platform. Zuckerberg noticed it and they purchased it early and they've benefited hugely from that investment. I think I read a stat somewhere that said, uh, they purchased uh, Instagram for about a billion dollars and now it's worth in their business approximately $100 billion. So I have no doubt they'll be able to continue to make uh, good investments in the payments and advertising space in these new markets in India, in Asia, and also in Africa over time. Um, and this is probably the biggest news out of everything that's happened this week. So um, I hope you guys, uh, well, first of all, I want to hear your thoughts on their earnings release and this investment if you're someone who is following Facebook. So uh, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll be answering questions when this video goes live. So for the first half an hour or so, if you're watching this, um, then make sure you get your comment down there. And then later, I'll also be answering comments. So um, whenever you're watching this, feel free to leave a comment or a question or anything you have there. And uh, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more earnings releases like this, then the best way that you can let me know is be a subscriber, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then also hit the like button so that uh, I know that these are the kinds of videos you guys want to see more of. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.